This is a row spec defender, rest of the world spec defender. And if you don't know what one of those is, then I've written an article, and the link is on the screen. But for the rest of you who do know what this is, gaze on in awe because it's a beautiful thing. Um, not only because this is in good condition, but because of what it actually is in terms of its specification. Now I'm going to have a walk around the vehicle and just if you've never seen one before, if you've never seen the insides and what, what these things look like, then I'm just going to have a, a walk around the vehicle and, and show you what makes this a rest of the world spec defender. Now I love rest of the world spec defenders because the first three defenders that I drove were actually row spec, just like this one, left hand drive. So this to me is what a defender actually is. My, I cut my teeth off road in one of these vehicles, all left hand drive, hence why I now own one. So how do you tell a rest of the world spec defender apart from either a TD5 or a 300 TDI that's earlier earlier made for the UK spec. This one has been a bit modified. Obviously the first thing is it's got an external roll cage, it's got some rock sliders. Um, these tyres are just for storage wheels and tyres so they're scabby but I don't care about them. So let's have a look at some of the features. Now the most obvious one to begin with, the first check I always do is indicators. We've got the oval indicators, that means it's post 1999, maybe 2002. We've got a TDI badge, I put this one on, and we've got uh, rounded hinges. That's the quickest way to know that it's potentially, because you never know because things get modified, potentially a rest of the world spec vehicle. Now, this might be missing if the TDI stick is missing because you're not likely to put a TDI sticker on a on a TD5. If this stick is missing, then what you can do is look for the back exhaust pipe. Now this is a stainless steel exhaust, so this one's not quite accurate. But you'll find on the TD5, they shoot out like this, whereas the 3 and TDIs shoot out at an angle. So the exhaust pipe is a, a good last check. With those, essentially, with the indicator, the sticker and or the exhaust pipe, you can tell that it's a rest of the world spade defender quite quickly. If you've got several of those things, you've got a good chance of telling that it's a roast bed defender. If it's white, that means it's more likely to be a roast bed defender, and left-hand drive, very likely to be a roast bed defender. And then, of course, if it's made after, well, the rest of the world's bed was made for several years, but 2002, 2006 is what we're talking about, really, with roast bed defenders, because they're the more modern versions, or the, mo the most modern version of a TDI that you can get, which to some, like me, is the holy grail. This one's had checker plate put on. I don't really like checker plate. Um, another feature normally on rose defenders, this has had it removed, I'm going to replace it, it's bottom mounted spare wheel, got the four rubber points here and here, and the three in the middle there, which you can't have on TD5 defenders because the engine and the bonnet don't quite work. Obviously you've got the TD5 rubbers and later windscreen wipers with the, with the nut that goes on as opposed to that stupid adapter thing where the splines wear. Still got the vents. Aerial, standard, standard Land Rover aerial. Underneath. Pretty standard affair. Shocks. And it's got the later power rod. From 2002 with the, the bushes got wider in here. Standard mirrors. And then we've got the wider, wider door locks, which are better. Oh, sounds like a new vehicle. Now, because this is 2004, it's got the square doors, steel with the pressed aluminium. Um, the rounded ones only came in from about 2005, 2006, so the last of the row spec defenders did have them. Um, also, some of the last ones had black door cards. This one's got grey, whereas that TD5 over there, 2004, has got black. Um, door cards, but they're both manual windows, so they probably just used up all the last of the spec. Same with the the seat box matting. That TD5 has got this type of matting. I put this on afterwards. What you normally get is this kind of matting, which you'd get on the 300 TDI. So Rose Bet Defenders actually had this kind of matting, not this kind of matting. But I think this is a lot better. They did have this floor mat though the standard TD5-ish style floor mat, which is a one piece across. Dashboard, well, here we go, those are the keys. This is all you need because you've got your ignition key, 
which is your door keys, all the side doors, rear door, and you get your fuel cap. And that's all you need. No immobilizer on this thing whatsoever. And that makes it probably a better thing than the, the, the 90s version 300 TDI. You've got the ignition, you've got the door key, you've got the fuel cap, and then you've got the immobilizer. So they're all, it's just a lot of weight and a lot of bulk there that just feels a bit unnecessary. Certainly what I like about it is it doesn't have any electrical gubbins in there. See, there's no volumetric sensor or anything like that in here. So it's just purely turn that, connects two bits of wires together, and the engine starts. Simple. Um, Left-hand drive instrument pack. Um, opposite way, this is uh, oil pressure has been put in afterwards. Um, most Rosebet defenders came with the kilometer speedometer. It goes up to 200 kilometers, even though this does have kilometers on it. The speedo is different, it goes up to 200 kilometers only, and there's no miles per hour on there because that's how most of the countries read their speed and distance. Um, steering wheels this is a, an older steering wheel, put on from a 97, but from 2002, I think the steering wheels got thinner. I used to know it because I drive a 97 and a 2002 Rosebeck Defender in our fleet, and there was something always a bit different about the driving style and position. And I later figured out because the, the earlier steering wheels are quite fat compared to the later ones, and I prefer the thinner steering wheels. But this is just a temporary one gone on the, on there. Looking into the battery box, no battery at the moment, but the way these are laid out is you've got your one negative, and then you've got your positive off to the battery and the alternator, and then this one positive, like with the TD5, goes across the back of the seat box to the fuse box over there, which I'll show you in a minute. This was highly modified, had two batteries in here, lots of fuse boxes and stuff. I've taken them all out, stripped it all back, because it was very confusing and unnecessary. I mean, the next most obvious thing is air conditioning. Um, this wasn't on every Rosebeck Defender, but it was on a lot of them. Um, it's a bit of a funny... I mean, air conditioning in these vehicles has never been great. Um, the thing that annoys me the most is when you take a handbrake off, your thumb, if you take it off like that, as I do normally, your thumb smashes into here, which is annoying. This one's got an extra dial on here because it's got rear air conditioning. Right up the back there. Standard TD5 dashboard instrumentation. The only difference with left hand drive really is the fog light gets put from here to here. This one's got a spotlight button in there which doesn't get used. This one here is an overdrive, uh, GKN overdrive. The centre would usually come with either a cubby box as an option. Or the, um, or well, actually, this one's got a middle seat belt, so it must have a centre seat at some point, which I didn't think was a, was a, was an option, but perhaps it was. Um, but you'd mostly get the uh, the centre console tray with the two cup holders for this era. These seats are Puma ones because I think they're more comfortable. They've got a better headrest and they've got more upper back support. I think so I've put these in as a bit of an upgrade but you'd get the st standard Defender seats they'd either come in vinyl or sometimes I think you'd get the denim twill not the denim twill, the twill kind of um, kind of trim um, but I'm not too sure on that but you wouldn't get leather certainly this one actually came with leather seats and I've taken them out to put it back to standard I'm all about the standard, love the standard um, everything else pretty similar headlining this is white for some reason I don't know if they're all white, but I've mostly seen grey ones. Here are the internal part of the roll cage. Um, this is normally how they normally attach into here and the seatbelt gets put back. So the seatbelt and roll cage vehicles can tend to cut off your air supply or your blood supply to your neck. Um, oh, I love that sound. That's just, you don't, that, just the sound of like a, a thud, a thud was a mine you slam it everything rattles and then you hear a tinkle as bits of rust drop out the bottom second row doors similar sort of thing now uh, they would come with a 60 40 uh, split second row seats in here with the seat brackets this one's been dynamited within an inch of its life and uh, it's everywhere which I think is a bit of a shame it does make it a bit quieter but I think it's a bit of a shame um, but you'd get the standard just corrugated uh, rubber mat on here and same at the back, just the corrugated rubber mat that just comes down to the, the front here. This would all be bare. 
Um, it's a shame this has got it all on it, but uh, I would have preferred it standard, but there we are. In the back, I've got loads of junk in here at the moment, but what you would have is the uh, bench seats along here, and this has had them taken out for the roll cage which fits into the mountings here. Um, but you'd have yeah the bench seats along here with the same TD5 arrangement with the seat belts in the back. Um, rear door, I've just taken this cover off at the moment because I've got to change the door lock. Um, but obviously rounded, rounded later pressed steel door, um, trim all the way around, um, and headlining. It's in quite good shape actually. A bit, a bit mouldy, but it's not dropping. External roll cage. It's a shame this is here because it means that you can't take the roll cage off because it's got dirty great holes in the bodywork all the way around, which is a shame. Um, underneath, this is all the cabling and, the, and the, the piping for the rear air conditioning, which is this unit right here. Uh, this is a pretty fairly standard under here. Uh, it's had the OME, Old Man Emu shocks been put on. This has got 130 helper springs in here. These look a bit tatty. I imagine these are OME shocks as, um, springs as well. Um, and there is the stainless exhaust, not looking so stainless anymore. One of the big features of a rest of the world spec defender is the plastic fuel tank, which is the same as the TD5, although it's got a different sender in, and it's only got two pipes going into the sender as opposed to four on a TD5, um, because this is essentially just a sender unit and a fuel pickup, it's not a pump or anything like that. These bumperettes have been put on. It's a shame someone's welded these on. So, uh, on that side there, they've been welded on. So I can't actually take them off. I would take them off to put it back to standard. But other characteristics of a TD5, you've got the round fog and reverse lights. They're standard there. Now I've taken the rear door lock out because I've got to change that. In there, taking the rear wheel carry off because I've got to change that. Now these tapes I've put on because it did not have them because it's had a respray in its life and these would have been lost. There's two versions of this, there's the light grey version or the silver version which is what you'd get on um, pre-2002 vehicles. Um, the later vehicles you get dark grey, so the silver and dark grey. Now actually a true roast pet defender from 2002 onwards would have the dark grey, same as the TDI badges on the front. So. I've actually messed up there, but I think only the purists would notice. However, I am a purist, so we'll have to see about that. TD5 cross member. This one's looking quite good. And then, of course, so some Rosebeck defenders, most had it like this. We had the, the inner rail on the inside. Some had it where you had the adjustable rail with the... With, this one's a, a solid bar that goes all the way along to the back. Some would have had the the flat sheet of metal with the tabs that come up along here, and they sit on the outside. So you can get two different varieties on there. I've seen both varieties on post 2002 vehicles. Hinges are put on the stainless stainless door bolts because these were rusty. Now, if you do have rusty ones, um, this was rust stained and disgusting, but actually it comes up really nice with a clay bar. So that's good to know. Going around to the fuel cap, um, similar TD5 fuel cap, I've put a later one on that's got this, uh, this is so useful, because you do take it off at the petrol station and you're like, where do I put this, oh, I've got to put it over there, and then you, the chances of losing it are quite high. Um, this is a great feature though, um, I think it's a 6.5mm hole you need to drill to put that in. Let's have a go, look up on the roof. So the roof has got the later ribbed roof on it and I I'm not entirely sure of the, the date. Something tells me it's 2004 but it must be 2002, maybe a change, it might be 2004 but you've got the ribbed route which you get on all Pumas and later TD5s which is essentially uh, one big piece all the way down to here where it's riveted in. Um, whereas before it was the side bit here, a centre bit and a side bit and they do tend to leak over time. One thing I just missed down here is the uh, fuel sedimenter. So you'll see this on the 2002 onwards 300 TDIs, they all had fuel sedimenters. Um, 
where this TD5 fuel filter would go. Same cover arrangement, but you've got two pipes, they come in and out of the front. One curls around that way and one goes off to the engine there. What I also need to mention is the rear differential. From around, I'm not exactly sure, 2002, 2003, um, when the Salisbury's run out, they started fitting the P38 later axle, which you can tell because it's circular, um, onto these vehicles. And over here on the right hand side you get the fuse box. Now this looks particularly sparse compared to a TD5 but it's the same arrangement. As I said the feed comes in from the battery box into the fuse box here. And we've got two relays. I think one is the... well essentially what we have is the bulkhead loom. Comes in... this is the bulkhead loom. Yeah, this is the bulkhead loom comes in here and sit compared to a TD5, look how thin that is, hardly any wires whatsoever. That comes in, goes into the fuse box, or, or rather comes out of the fuse box, goes into the loom. Then here we have the engine loom um, in the second, which is in the second um, grommet here, which is the glow plug um, in here. And then I think one's a starter relay, I'm not sure what the other one is. In there, so this is just the overdrive, which has been disconnected. But yeah, um, a lot simpler than the TD5 here, you get the ECU around about here. There we go, and there's the air conditioning unit. And the bonnet, the later bonnet um, opening, which is a lot easier than, than the pulling. I've retrofitted that on my 300 TDI, because you've just got to pull it and they seize and it's a nightmare. Now up at the front we've got the pretty standard snorkel, I've just disconnected this one for the time being um, while it's in storage. These were, so I remember in about 2002 you could buy a row spec Defender, I know because the organisation I worked for had bought one for this, bought it for £14,000 in 2002 and that was because you didn't pay for VAT so you, you essentially got it a lot cheaper than you would get otherwise. In around about 2010, they were costing about 18,000. You could still get them new delivery miles in about 2010 with, uh, yeah, for about 18,000, probably plus VAT on top of that. Um, nowadays, this is 2017, you'd be looking 20,000 to pick up a Rosebet Defender. And actually, there won't be any delivery miles ones left. The last delivery miles Defender, Rosebet Defender, I saw was in 2012 in the warehouse of a charity when they were they had two of them left hand drive similar to this and they were shipping them um, out to africa but they were immaculate i was in i was in on cloud nine when i saw those the gearbox oh, they just the, if you've ever felt a delivery miles r380 you will realize that reconditioned gearboxes are just nothing like the original nothing like a brand new gearbox it's amazing um, you could still buy delivery miles vehicles in around about 2010 or 11 from general suppliers. Um, but if, yeah, probably up to 2012, maybe even beyond 13, 14 perhaps. But now it's 2017, I doubt you'd be able to get it. Deliveries miles. Roast but Defender anyway. But even having said that, people that bought them in the later years probably realise what they're worth, so they're probably not going to have as many miles on, um, on them. I was very lucky to find this one. 39,000 miles this was. And... Uh, very good condition, very good condition. Well, the other thing to know about this one is it's actually, even though it's a 2004 uh, registration number, it's uh, 2003 model year. So this one was built and it sat around, it was built the 23rd of February 2003 and it was first registered at the beginning of April 2004. So it sat around for a year and two months, which I think is very common with these vehicles, hence why some delivery miles are being sold in 2012 when they were six years old by that point because they went, didn't make them after 2006 so um, you would get these they were just built whereas normal defenders normal vehicles are built to a customer order and then they're delivered to the dealer or the dealer will put in some orders for vehicles they know will sell these were just sort of built in i imagine they were built in empty slots they hadn't sold and then just shipped out to dealers like Guava International and Conrico who were the official exporters of Land Rover and they would just sit around and they would be up to them to sell them because they would generally sell for in batches you know a, an NGO would say oh we need five defenders 
Um, so they can say, oh, we've got three, we're going to have to wait for another two to be built. They'd stockpile them so they could meet those big orders um, more effectively. So it means a lot of these did actually sit around in warehouses for quite a while, so it's not uncommon to find them being an earlier model spec than the registration they have. I mean, there are some 2010 registered Rosebeck Defenders that Foley's were making. Um, and you can find 2008 ones, 2007, 2008 ones as well. So uh, the bonnet. This is actually a place where it's quite uh, familiar. You can pick up a few other extra pointers to figure out whether it's row spec or not. This one's got a 2.8 TGV in it, so that's actually a bit of a um, a bit of a red herring in that regard. You can tell 2.8 TGV. It's got a different rocker cover. It's raised here. The inlet manifold is a bit different. Not quite 300 TDRB angled here, and you'd have a a bit of a crank on the rubber hose. Whereas this one is more straight. Other than that, it's quite straightforward. So we've got air conditioning in this one. This is the compressor sits here. The yellow um, reservoir, coolant reservoir, is quite a good indicator because these are only fitted to later vehicles. So by the time 97, 98 rolled around, they were still using the black ones in Defenders. So UK spec will have black ones, as opposed to these these more these yellower ones. Uh, what else have we got? Um, this one's got the air conditioning grill as well. Um, the it's, it's essentially you're looking for any TD5 features that um, that are on the vehicle. So this is the washer fluid bottle that sits down under the wing here. And then also you can usually tell at the back here the back of the bulkhead is a lot more uncluttered. 390, the 90s spec, UK spec, 300 TDIs, had a lot of clutter along the back here. Um, whereas this is a lot more clear and open. Just got one bracket for the heater cables and then the, the, the clutch pipes essentially. And then down here you've got the routing of the bulkhead wiring which comes down onto this fixing point here. And that generally signifies as well that you've got a post 2002 bulkhead. You can take a look at the wiring loom, it's a lot more straightforward. The connector is a lot more modern and they clip on to certain points. And there we have it. This is my pride and joy. Um, I'm so chuffed to be owning one, it's unreal. I cannot believe I own one. I've had this one for about two years now, but uh, it still uh, gives me goosebumps when I think about the fact that I own one. Oh, as well, I've put the obligatory. A lot of the export defenders, particularly with Conrica, they used to put um, Union Jacks on, which I think is an amazing feature. I think it's great. It just uh, allows you to, it just lives and breathes its Britishness, which I think is amazing. When you drive these vehicles overseas and you wear the Union Jack, um, that's an amazing feature. So leave any comments below if you've had any experience with Rosebeck defenders, if you've got any questions you will answered about um, anything on these vehicles, I'm more than happy to answer them because I love these things and I've studied them immensely and as I say I've driven quite a few of them so um, they're quite ingrained in my brain actually. <laughs>